What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today is a very special one for multiple reasons So first of all, obviously we're opening up a visions pack not something that we get to open very often But two you'll notice we have a new playmat behind us. This is supplied by ink gaming uh, We are an affiliate of theirs. So if you would like to order anything from Inked Gaming, I would highly suggest using the link down below. If you do that, uh, you not only get a little bit of a discount, I believe, but you also uh, help us out a little bit. So it's really, really nice. We super appreciate any support that you would be willing to give. And I'm really excited to jump into this Visions pack. So uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Uh, and uh, we'll get right into it. So of course, we're going to do this as we normally would, uh, trying to determine what our first round draft pick would be. I do not know for sure uh, where the rare is or even what the good cards are in this one. So we're going to do the best we can, but we'll see what we get. So mob mentality is our first card enchant creature. The creature gains trample. Uh, if all non wall creatures you control attack, the enchanted creature gets plus star plus zero until the end of the turn where star is equal to the number of attacking creatures. This is also only one red mana. Uh, this is a really interesting one. I'm not like a huge fan of it. It sort of encourages the go wide strategy, which isn't bad by any means, but you are kind of locking yourself into wanting to attack with literally all of your creatures. That being said, uh, for only one mana, that's not a lot of investment. So I feel like for an enchant creature, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it does open yourself up for the classic two for one that I always talk about with enchant creatures, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, so this probably isn't necessarily a first pick by any means, but I don't actually think it's the worst either. Uh, we'll keep it here for now. Uh, elephant grass is our is an enchantment for one green it has a cumulative upkeep cost of one of any color uh, which basically just means on each of your upkeeps you're gonna have to pay that one uh, and I don't know for sure but I believe that that starts stacking so I think you actually have to start paying more and more every time uh, black creatures cannot attack you and non black creatures cannot attack you unless their controller pays an additional two for each attacking creature this is very much a stall card. Uh, in certain decks, I actually am okay with stall cards, so this might be a perfectly fine pick. Uh, but you are investing a lot of mana with that cumulative upkeep, which is not exactly the best. Uh, I don't know if this is really good. I think I like it more than the mob mentality, but I don't honestly know if this is a good card. Unfortunately, having never played with Visions, we're kind of on the cuff here. So we'll see. Uh, not super stoked about it, but we'll see what happens in the rest of the pack. Uh, Longbow Archer is a 2-2 two -two for 2 white. Uh, it has first strike and can block creatures with flying. So this is an above average 2 drop. Uh, that being said, it does cost a little bit, uh, it, it's a little bit trickier to play because it is 2 white, uh, not just 1 and a white or something along those lines. But this is a very, very solid 2 drop. I actually think so far this is the most not only straightforward, just good card, uh, but I do think this is just by far the most powerful we've seen in the pack. It is only a two drop, so you're not expecting this to stick around forever, but in the early to mid game, uh, this definitely gets around a lot of the other kind of lower ground creatures, uh, as well as being able to block flying creatures, which is definitely a huge buff as well. Uh, Squandered Resources is an enchantment for black and a green. You can sacrifice a land and add to and add to your mana pool one mana of any type that the sacrificed land could produce. Uh, play this ability only as a mana source. I really don't like this. Uh, it technically allows you to ramp uh, in a weird way. So you can tap the land, uh, gain the mana off of just tapping it, uh, and then not only that, but you actually can then sacrifice it and get mana that way, which is fine, but then long term you're setting yourself up for huge disappointment when you actually have no lands the next turn. So uh, I feel like this is a good way to get uh, ahead very quickly, but in general I'm not super stoked about it. Uh, it's a very kind of all-in card. I think I'd rather just have the solid archer, to be honest. Uh, King Cheetah is a 3-2 for 3 and a black. You may choose to play King Cheetah whenever you could play an instant. Uh, a 3-2 for 4 is obviously not great, but this is back in a time where magic wasn't necessarily focused as much on the creatures. Uh, much more spells focused and things like that, and so the creatures tend to be a little bit more underpowered. Uh, being able to play this at instant speed, so basically giving it flash, is not too bad actually. Uh, it's again not amazing. Uh, it doesn't actually deal with the archer, for instance. If we were trying to flash this in, block the archer, the archer has first strike, so it's going to be able to, to take it down. Uh, so this ne isn't necessarily the best card in the world. I do love the art on it, uh, but in general this just seems like a filler green creature. 
Uh, heart charm. This is part of a cycle. Uh, it is an instant for one red. You can choose one. Destroy target artifact creature or all attacking creatures get plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. Or target creature with power two or less is unblockable this turn. Uh, so this is very much focused on aggress ag aggressive decks. Excuse me. Uh, so obviously destroying target artifact creature that's going to be hit or miss. Uh, you're not always going to have an artifact creature for this to hit. Uh, but if you do for only one mana and at instant speed, that's pretty good. Uh, however, for all attacking creatures getting plus one plus zero, that's actually a pretty big buff. Uh, especially if you really are in a good go wide strategy, this is going to be a great card for you. Uh, not only that, but then being able to, uh, if, if you do not have a go wide strategy, uh, making target creature with power two or less unblockable is actually pretty good in an aggressive deck as well. Uh, we see this effect on, uh, certain creatures. I know there was one, I believe in one of the recent sets, it's like a two drop red card might have even been core set 2019. I'm not sure. But it basically did the exact same thing. It made things unblockable. And in a lot of cases, that's quite good because then you can either pump it up after the fact or even just swing in and deal a little extra damage with it. A lot of options there. I like the flexibility of a card like this. I would rather be established in red first. Uh, so I think here I'm still going to take the archer, but it's not a bad card. <coughs> Uh, Bull Elephant is a 4-4 four, four for 3 and a green. When it comes into play, return two forests you control to your owner's hand or bury Bull Elephant. That just means send it to the graveyard. Obviously, that's a huge downside, especially in limited, when you really need to keep up with the pace of the game. Whatever your opponent's doing, you need to be able to match power level to power level and then ideally be able to take over. And if you can't do that, that's going to be a huge issue. This, uh, not really my kind of creature. I feel like it's okay, but not great. Uh, returning those two forests does seem like just like a huge drawback to me. And so for that reason, I'm not super interested in it. Uh, Gossamer Chains is an enchantment for two white. Uh, return it to its owner's hand. Target unblocked creature deals no combat damage this turn. Really interesting card. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it's just basically a fog effect. Uh, which is fine, but not really great. It's just a stall uh, kind of position. I'd rather have something like hard removal or something along those lines. Uh, and so for that reason, not super interested. Uh, Dwarven Vigilantes is a 2-2 for 2 and a red. If it attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal no combat damage this turn. If you do, it deals an amount of damage equal to its power to target creature. Now this is actually a pretty interesting card. So uh, this does really, really well in a position where you're kind of uh, on board doing fairly well already because you're going to be able to take down a lot of these other like smaller creatures. Uh, it decentivizes the opponent from doing anything like playing all these cheap creatures. It just doesn't work as well because of a card like this, which is good. However, it is just a 2-2 two, two for 3. It's going to be able to get blocked pretty easily. Uh, and so for that reason, um, I feel like it's good in only certain situations. It sounds great on the face of it, but I don't think it's as good as it looks uh, just by the first glance of the card. Uh, Wake of Vultures is a 3-1 flyer for three and a black. You can pay one and a black and sacrifice a creature to regenerate the vultures. Uh, that just means it's going to be a very difficult card to actually deal with a lot of the time. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I love the flying evasiveness of this card. I think it's fantastic. 3-1 obviously means in the air. If they do have a creature to block it, no matter what creature it is, more than likely it's going to be able to kill it, uh, unless it's a wall or something along those lines. Uh, but in general... This is just a perfectly serviceable 4-drop in my opinion. Uh, I do think that the sacrificing a creature just to regenerate this one is a little bit steep, uh, but it does lay out those options for you. It just means that you're able to keep this around a little bit longer if you see fit depending on the board state. I'd still, again, rather have the archers. It's just such a solid 2-drop uh, that I think I'm really, really stuck on that one. Uh, Vanishing is an enchant creature for one blue. You can pay two blue and the en enchanted creature phases out. If you don't know what phases out means, it essentially means it's put into exile completely outside of the game. And then at the end of the turn, it phases back in. Uh, and so what you can do with something like this is if they target it with removal, you phase it out. The removal fizzles and then it comes back in at the end of the turn. I am okay with that. However, you always have to leave up two blue just to play this. 
Uh, and that's a bit of a steep cost in my opinion. I think I would rather just have more effective creatures that I can play later on uh, than have to worry about one particular creature, especially in limited. You really want to be able to spread out those resources and spread out that damage as much as possible. Uh, that way you're not so susceptible to just targeted removal and things like that. Uh, Vision Charm, again, part of this cycle, an instant for one blue, choose one, target artifact phases out, or put the top four cards uh, from target player's library into their graveyard, or all lands of one type are basic lands of your choice until the end of the turn. I don't like this card. Uh, this seems very, very bad and limited unless somehow you manage to get a ton of them and you could do a mill strategy. Uh, but other than that, this doesn't seem like it does enough. Phasing out an artifact maybe might be useful if you're in an artifact deck or something like that. Uh, or if you're just trying to phase out an effect on the opponent's side of the field maybe for a turn, but that just seems very, very bad. Uh, top four cards uh, into the graveyard milling four. That's probably the most useful, uh, unfortunately. Um, mill is pretty good and limited normally because there's only 40 cards to deal with from the start. However, uh, really, I guess 33 if you start with a seven card hand. But uh, if, uh, if you don't really have a dedicated mill strategy, it's not that great. And so this is just one instance, one very small piece of what could be a mill deck. And that reason, this is not good at all. Uh, basic lands of, are the type of your choice until the end of the turn. Very rarely do I think that actually matters. Uh, you could technically blank an opponent's turn, maybe. Uh, if on upkeep you played this and turn all of their basic lands into a color that they're not playing at all. And then if they just don't have a land drop or something like that and they can't play any of their spells, then maybe you get a free time walk kind of an effect out of it. Uh, but it really isn't that impactful. They can still play lands from their hand. They can still do other things. So not super excited by this card at all. Uh, Wicked Reward is an instant for one and a black. You can sacrifice a creature and target creature gets plus four plus two until the end of the turn. Uh, this is just a really high costed combat trick in my mind. Um, plus four plus two is great. Don't get me wrong. But sacrificing a creature to give plus four plus two just seems kind of bad. I'm sure at this time, this is a perfectly reasonable combat trick. Uh, again, this set came out a very, very long time ago, but in general, this is not super exciting for me. Uh, Free Wind Falcon is a 1-1 one, one for one and a white. It has flying and protection from red. This is actually a perfectly fine flyer. I still like the archer better, but a two drop 1-1 one, one with flying is pretty okay anyway. Protection from red just makes it that much better against certain decks. Obviously, it's not going to be relevant all the time, but occasionally it'll come in handy. And then the last card here is Spider Climb. It's an enchant creature for one green. You may choose to play it as an instant. If you do, you bury it at the end of the turn. The enchanted creature gets plus zero, plus three, and can block creatures with flying. I do not like this card. Buffs to toughness, I'm not as into as buffs to power. You want to be able to deal as much damage as possible. This just helps you stay on the defensive, which I'm not a huge fan of. So for that reason, it's a pretty clear longbow archer for me. Uh, there's definitely a couple interesting cards in this set. I love opening these old sets, uh, so I'll take them as much as possible. They're just super, super fun. But if you disagree with me, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Don't forget as well, the Inked Gaming affiliate link is down below. We would very much appreciate it if you plan to order from them. Uh, go through that link and we'd, we'd really, really appreciate it. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.